wanna be the very best under the Hawaiian sun To catch them is my request, to train them is such fun I will journey across the shores in search of violent vibes Teach Pokemon to understand the spirit that survives Pokemon, gotta catch them all It's you and me in paradise, our destiny Pokemon, oh, you're my closest friend Together to the very end Pokemon, gotta catch them all A heart so true Our aloha will pull us through You teach me and I'll teach you Hi everyone, it's MJ, the fellow actuary, and in today's video, we're asking, can an actuary win the Pokemon World Championship? Now, an actuary is basically just a professional that deals with uncertainty and consequences, and the Pokemon World Championship is the most prestigious event in the TCG hobby. Now, forget the $2 million prize fund. There are some really cool promo cards that one can get by competing in this event, and yeah, that's what we're after. But we don't want to just participate. We want to do well. And we want to see if actuarial science can help us achieve that goal. So I started playing competitive Pokemon last year. And the first thing I did was build this hypergeometric distribution. And essentially, I wanted to determine the odds of my starting hand. So let's say the size of my deck is 60 and I'm drawing seven cards at the start. How many copies of a Pokemon and its proxy, these are trainer cards that can search for the Pokemon, must I include to make sure I have, I don't know, let's say an 80% chance of starting off with it. Now, Pokemon has this rule that you can only have four of any one card, and that's why we would need proxies if we want to extend it beyond four. And we can see that if we want to have a probability of 80% of starting off with one of these cards in our hand, we're gonna need 12 of them. So four of the actual Pokemon and then eight of the proxies. And I was trying to use this model to determine what is the best way to construct a deck. And then I realized there's a much easier way and that is simply to go to this website called TCG, uh, well, Limitless uh, TCG and click on the decks. And essentially what you will find here is a whole bunch of the main meta decks that are getting played out. So if you want to play with, say, Lugia, you click on that one and they will literally tell you which cards are in the deck, what is the probability of each one incurring in the main decks, or you simply just come here and go to a list and you will get the whole deck as laid out. So it was like, okay, we don't need a hypergeometric distribution. We can simply come onto Limitless and pick one of these decks. But of course, another question now pops up is, which of these decks should I choose? Well, like any good actuary, I decided to consult with an expert, and that's exactly what I did. I found this 14-year-old who was winning every single local tournament here in South Africa. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter, Project Arceus, hired him as my coach, and he told me about another website, which was called Trainer Hill. Let's maybe just type that in over there. And what was really cool with Trainer Hill was there is all of this data. And I think this is when I started getting really excited as, as an actuary because look at all this beautiful data. And you start to realize something about the Pokemon game, and that is that it kind of starts to resemble a little bit of rock, paper, scissors. Of course, Rock, Paper, Scissors has three choices with a deterministic result, where Pokemon has these multiple choices and you're ending up with this probabilistic result. But remember, actuaries, we like uncertainty and consequences. And sometimes we will call uncertainty the frequency. And in this case, if we look at this information over here, this is the likelihood of other players playing specific decks based on past results we can kind of look at this information here as our uncertainty, as our frequency. And then another word for consequence that we sometimes use is severity. 
and this is the likelihood of which team winning. So if Charizard was to play, say, God of War, it will have a 51.9% chance to win based on past results. And this can be our severity. So I copied the data into an Excel sheet and I cleaned up the data. And once I had the severity of the matchups along with the frequency, which is the player population, all I then needed to do was to multiply and sum them out in order to get a total score. And I could also take the second moment if I wanted to look at consistency, and that's kind of what I was doing. So for an international tournament, I'm gonna to choose the one with the highest sum, and for the local tournament, I was gonna choose one with the lowest standard deviation. And yeah, the model along with the coaching worked. I mean, we started winning these local cups, and so what happens with that is that they start giving you these really cool play mats. And we got enough of them that we actually qualified for the World Cup. The problem is the World Cup was all the way out in Hawaii. Now, we're based literally there in South Africa. And the crazy thing is, is that it's almost the same distance if I was to go west or if I was to go east. But if you look at the world, the quickest way is actually to go south Ugh. <laughs> and then come back up. That, that would actually be the shorter distance. But, you know, there aren't any flights that go through Antarctica. And what we eventually decided to do was to first fly to Japan. And that actually was one of my first big mistakes. So going to Japan itself wasn't a mistake. The mistake was turning it into a month-long holiday before the World Championships. And I guess it was because I'm flying halfway around the world, I might as well make the most of it while I'm there. The problem is that a new Pokemon set was released two weeks before the World Championship. And that meant that the strategies, the meta, and everything was about to change, and the model itself was going to be disturbed. Because the thing about Actrees is that two of us could run the exact same model and come to different results, depending on the data that we used. You could have an Actree that favors credible data and tries to get as much data as possible, and you could have another actuary that favors relevance and wants to get data that most closely represents the situation. Think of it as this. Matches played you know, the night before a major tournament are gonna to be a lot more relevant than that same matchup played a year ago. And that's the case in Pokemon where new cards are constantly being released. So we had the situation where I was flying off to Japan for you know, a 10 day holiday, then getting into Hawaii a week early. And I wasn't prepared to take all my cards along with me. So I only took two decks. I took the most powerful deck that was currently um, shown to be based on the model. And I took another deck called Reggie Drago that was going to improve the most due to the new set of cards. And that was the one everyone is getting quite hyped up about. But instead of being able to pick from, you know, 20 very competitive decks, I was reducing my, my choice down to two. So yeah, probably not the best thing to do when you want to win a world championship. But before we get into the world championship and talk more about the model's results, um, let me just share with you some of the, the photos I had on this, like I said, this holiday that I probably should not, should not have taken. Let's play a little quick slideshow. In a world of colors where dreams are made, I found a treasure in the light of day. With a heart so pure like a shining star, did you go through refined and here you are? God in the past, lend you the pain You draw me in love's new refrain Every glance, every touch, it's so divine In your eyes, I see the stars align Oh, you're my curious so beautiful, so rare Touch, you energize this place. 
So the song you heard in the background was actually created by AI on the Curlier Refinement and God of War EX deck. And I made an entire album called Which Pokemon Ate My Cake. It's available on Spotify. There's 35 songs, all based around Pokemon. The first few are just kind of like fun party songs. And then the last few are based on the actual deck's strategies and abilities of the cards played in that deck. So quite a fun album uh, that you guys can go check out. And, and while we're just promoting things, I might as well tell you about this NFT marketplace that I am building that will allow you to trade Pokemon cards um, over the blockchain. And this is something that I've been doing with the, the Lisk Incubator. It's called PokeCoin at the moment. I'll put a link in the description below. And if you go to that link and you fill in this waitlist, when we do eventually launch, you'll be able to get an airdrop and some cool goodies around the site. But yeah, with, the, with that promotion done, let's jump back to the World Championship. So I ran the model just before we had to submit our decks, and to my surprise, the Reggie Drago deck was not as strong as I thought it would be. I mean, my model ranks it down all the way in just 12th place with an expected win rate of 42.8%. Now, because you can win, lose, or draw, anything over 40% is good. But relatively, Reggie Drago, which everybody was hyping up because of the new cards that I was getting from the Shrouded Fable set, was not actually that hot. Fortunately, the other deck that I had brought with me, which was Snorlax, it had an expected win rate of 47.6%, which was high, and the second highest in fact. But I was worried, because if we look at my data from, say, July, it had a 49% success rate, and when I ran the model in May, it had a 56% Snorlax rate. So you, you don't have to be an actuary to notice this downhill trend. And what I like about Snorlax is that most Pokemon decks are quite aggressive and they win by knocking out the other Pokemon. Where Snorlax is a pacifist and wins by controlling the game just long enough until your opponent runs out of cards, which triggers a game loss condition. Now Snorlax is hated by the community because the games tend to be the longest and it resembles more of a chess match. A lot of thinking and a lot of strategizing. Now, Snorlax has quite a nice matchup if we come to the general grid over here. Uh, Snorlax is this one at the bottom. It has quite a nice matchup against an range of various decks, but it does have a serious weakness to Lugia, where when someone plays with Snorlax against Lugia, they only have a 37% win rate. So as long as I don't match up against Lugia, I should be fine. But interestingly, if we were to look at who is the number one deck, it's this new entry of Iron Thorns. Now, it's a strange deck in that it only plays one Pokemon, Iron Thorns, which is Tyranitar from the future. It has a pretty weak attack, but it has an ability that prevents all other abilities. So this effect is devastating for the majority of other decks. And the only way to really counter it is by including a card called Cancelling Cologne, which turns off your opponent's ability for a turn. The problem is that Cancelling Cologne is also very effective at countering the Snorlax deck. So with two major threats, many techs going into Worlds were going to include at least one copy of this Cologne, which would further reduce Snorlax's win rate. Now, would I have played Iron Thorns if I had the cards with me in Hawaii? It's a difficult question to answer because I hadn't really practiced with it and it was seen as a meme deck. Also, my model wasn't using the most credible data. It was only using two weeks of online tournaments before the World Championship. And when I shared the model results with some of the other players, they laughed and they said that my maths was wrong and that Iron Thorns would never win the World Championship. But with the modeling done, Let's jump into the actual World Championship and see how I did. So it's almost midnight here in Hawaii, but we have managed to get everything ready for tomorrow. 
Um, first of all, shout out to Nightly Gamings for making this special mat for us, for Worlds. Um, that is, I've, I've forgotten what Pokemon that is. Clefable, that is Clefable. And tomorrow we're going to be playing with Snorlax and he's going to be supported by his friends Mimikyu, Rotom, Pidgeot and this new Pokemon. What, what even is its name? Ogre Pond. Anyway, uh, that's the rest of our cards that we're going to be playing with and yeah, wish me the best of luck. Catchers, I can't evade Your smile's my trap No escape in sight With you, my love, everything feels right Every glance, every touch, I'm captivated In your presence, my heart's elated To win, I don't need to take a prize card Like little baby Q Invite me over, I promise I'm sober In your arms I find my peace With you my love, my worries so round one, and I have to play against Lugia. This means I only have a 37% win expectancy. And you can see my opponent was from Germany, and based on their history, uh, you know, Dortmund, Stuttgart, they've played Lugia quite a bit in the past. They've even won $1,000 playing Pokemon. But fortunately, this was a matchup that I had prepped for. The coach the night before, we played a couple of games. So pushing the brain to its absolute limit, I somehow managed to win my my first game even though the odds were against me and this is the perfect start to the world cup round two i'm playing against reggie drago and the odds are in my favor at 58.2 percent the problem is that this was my first world cup and let's just say i didn't really know the whole the whole tournament format and and what is required in that so a long uh, line at the the bathroom my phone's internet not working and i arrive five minutes late for my match to get a game penalty and when you're playing against snorlax it's very very difficult almost impossible to kind of make it back with that type of penalty so we ended up losing now my opponent was from chile and he felt so bad about this after the tournament, I, I saw him and he was just giving me free cards because he felt so bad about that penalty. He did end up um, coming 112th at the World Championship. And you can see, based on his history, he's also won some money playing Pokemon. My third game was against Lugia again. Again, so 37% success rate. And I was playing against someone from Japan who had come fourth in the Japan Championship of 2024 now this is a huge tournament in fact it's like double the size of the world championship i think there was like over 2,000 players so for them to come fourth you know two months before uh the tournament i had my work cut out with me but again somehow the cards just landed in my hand and we ended up winning a game so it's three games we've won two we threw away one because of a penalty the fourth game was against Raging Bolt and the first American player that I would come up against. This player's won $2,000 playing Pokemon and you can see they've also got quite a nice track record. 65%, it was a fairly straightforward win with Snorlax. So boom, we're going in halfway through day one, three wins and just one loss. I was the top South African player along with Jonah. We were the only two had won three games and only lost one. So four more games to go. And if we just carried on this trend, we were gonna make it day two, which is knockout. And then day three would be the final. And look, round five, I, I paired into another Reggie Drago. The odds this time were in my favor. Um, but this was, yeah, not, not to be my day. I do end up losing. So Connor Hurst beats me, even though the match was stacked in my favor. 
I then play Neo, who was fairly young. You can see in 2023, he was still playing in the senior division where he came 26 in the world. Um, he even came third in the Melbourne, you know, international championship. So really, really good player. My Elries, which are my main offensive against Charizard, were both in the prize cards uh, for game one. And he also, he didn't use rare candies, which is a common strategy with Charizard. He actually evolved the Pokemon manually, which my Snorlax Dex wasn't really ready for. So we ended up losing this game. Then we played against Alexander Hamilton, round seven with his Guardi deck. You can see he's got so much tournament history that we're running out of space. And he even has his Twitter handle on, on Limitless, which shows you know, what a great player he was. And yeah, I mean, even though he was playing Guardi, I had the, the matchup advantage, he did end up beating me. And then the final game of the day was against Neddy. Um, from Czechia, I think that's the name of the country. It was another Lugia matchup, but this time Lugia would get the final laugh and I would end up losing this one as, as well. And you know, looking back on it, we started really, really strong. And I think my inexperience and my lack of mental stamina, which I probably overstated going into this tournament, uh, let me down and the more seasoned players were able to to pounce on me, even though, like I say, in quite a lot of the matches, I had the advantage because we had built the model that would give me a bit of the edge, and we had then tweaked the deck a little bit to give us a bit of a fighting chance against Legia. So this was my my tournament history, um, but I'm just thinking, where, where else in tournament history have you had Michael Jordan competing against Neo as well as Alexander Hamilton? I mean, it's it's... Pokemon as well, you know, so it was quite a crazy, crazy kind of matchup. Uh, but yeah, those were the matches for my tournament. And unfortunately, we didn't even make it to day two. So we got we got knocked out. We came 600 and something, something. Uh, yeah, so with a win record of three wins and five losses. So if an actuary didn't win the Pokemon World Championship, who did? Was it maybe someone playing Reggie Drago? It was, after all, the most hyped up and popular deck on the day of the tournament. Well, no, the model said it was rubbish, which is a bit unfortunate because we got a really cool song for Reggie Drago. Um, no, the model suggested that Iron Thorns was going to win, and. Out here, is there anything in the deck that can get. There's one, maybe two energy. Is there an attacker? Is there a switch? We are thinking. What are we thinking here, Shay? I'm thinking that there might not be a way out of this push to Noshke. Uh, just going to conclude that Earth and Vessel. And there is the hand of Fernando Di Fuentes is your 2024 Pokemon trading card game world champion. Fernando takes the world championship trophy back to Chile for the first time ever in Pokemon history. And the first person to ever win a World Championship title with only four Pokemon in his deck. Congratulations to Fernando de Fuentes! Well, look at you with the facts there already, Shay. As soon as he won the championships, you had the facts out there. And Iron Thorns EX is your Masters Division champion. Yeah, Iron Thorns ended up winning. The model was right. Uh, but despite that, we're still going to play the Reggie Drago song because, <laughs> because it's a lot of fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll, I'll see you soon. And yeah, don't forget to join the Pokey list, uh, the Pokey coin wait list. I'll put a link in the description below. Cheers.
Till dance, take a chance, playing with heart Energy switch, got a niche from the start Red your dragon in the game, tearing decks apart Let you dragon. 